Alright, so I think I started out with this thing, or ended up with this thing last time when I retopologized it, so now we're into the painting phase of it. Uh, I'm just going to show a simple object like this. Uh, usually I just repeat the same process over and over again for the muscles. I wasn't looking really for anything really realistic. Uh, definitely not hyper-realistic, but just more or less like a, uh, a representation of what those parts are. And so... Um, Basically, uh, I developed this, wrote down my steps so I could remain consistent throughout the musculature of the body project, and then when I bring it in the substance painter, uh, just go through these steps. So I'm just going to activate the shelf. I did make some tools to make this stuff go a little bit faster. Um, basically, the tendon white type of brush, black specs, and darkener, you'll see all that stuff. So basically what I do is I start out with a fill layer, and I define the color that we're going to fill with and um, always when I do this part is uh, I get that pretty purple okay so then that's our fill layer then we make another layer on top of that so that just basically fills your entire um, object up and then I get another one to put some dark back, uh, dark stuff on it and so um, Basically, I'm using a bark type of pattern to darken some of the areas of the muscle because the area is not, the muscle isn't like completely solid color. So we just do a little bit of that. <clears throat> then I'll go ahead and add another layer and then my other tool has specs that go, that looks like this. And it's just a stylized look. You don't usually find specs too much in muscles, but uh, it's just to break up the surface. And then using the blending modes that are similar to Photoshop, we can adjust the opacity of that stuff. I'll put another fill layer on top of it. Uh, this will represent the tendons. And so, And you can't just tab on over into the next field to define the red, green, and blues. And you can't just hit enter to do it. It doesn't work that way. I wish that was a workflow change that had happened in Substance Painter, but it's not, you know. Um, but then we use a mask. And masks are very powerful in Substance Painter to use, just as they are in Photoshop. So we'll just add a black mask to tell everything to erase that off. And then this is where I start using this tendon white thing. And the white allows me to draw it in. And so the tendons, usually at the origins and insertions of muscles. And I give it a little bit of this on that end. And I come over here. There's an insertion point, like right around here. Just rough that in really quick. And then after I got that roughed in, um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some out. So then we take some out, give it that kind of marbled texture that you see if you've ever seen a piece of steak. Same thing. Same thing with all sorts of different things, meats, red meats, whatever. Uh, so you've actually seen this before. And then there's a fascia that goes over the top and I decided to give it a certain amount of um, well, breaking up the surface a little bit. And so we're going to use the same fill layer except that we're going to use a white mask on this part. And I'm going to make it a screen. And we're going to let it go at about 2%. And so now you can see over, it's kind of, it kind of mutes everything else below it. But it's usually the fascia doesn't appear to be quite as uniform all the way through, so we use the same black type of brush to make it look spotty. The roughness and the uh, uh, the glossiness type of stuff or whatever uh, that I'm going to be using uh, is going to be controlled basically by um, the node network and not by this system here, so I'm not going to export any of that stuff. So I have a base, and this is pretty much what my muscles look like all the way around. Uh, to see it in a rendered type of situation. Uh, so this painter has eye ray within it. 
and it's out in the middle of the field, whatever. Um, <laughs> so, this is what we end up getting, and that's what would show up if you set up a node network to look like that. But, like I said, the roughness, this, this glossiness on it is going to be controlled pretty much by the roughness settings within the node network that I'm going to use. I'm still currently using RenderMan for this project, but I upgraded to Blender 2.79. I might have to download an older version, 2.78C or something like that, because RenderMan is really, really crashy with it. And the only reason why I'm using RenderMan is because I like the settings that it has in it um, and the output that it gives like I explained before, but if I have to, I'll go to Cycles or Radeon Pro Render at some point in time uh, and, and render these things out. So um, Cycles is perfectly capable to do that. So after we have all these things, basically what we're going to do is we're going to export all these textures out. Um, the most uh, common problem that I had was to uh, and I always copy my path um, the um, problems that I had before was forgetting to take it take my objects in the other package and give it a surface or a material uh, otherwise it'll just say default here and it'll export everything as default and you'll have to rename everything so um, make sure you give your object a material first before you export and you export the shaders out these are small maps because it's a small part and then i'm not going to get close to them and so it cuts down on memory um, uh, overhead and stuff like that so it, it makes it a little bit easier to handle and like i said these are like little small muscles of the thumb and stuff don't really need to be all that big the intrinsic muscles of the hand and stuff are really small i don't need to bring that up it exports them all wherever I told it to, and these little maps, I usually get rid of these, because like I said before, uh, this is, I, in this double naming convention, I don't know where this is coming from, well I know it's coming from Substance Painter, I'm just not sure why it's giving it its name twice, its material name twice for these types of things. I don't understand why that's happening, but it does, uh, big deal, you know, you can edit them if you want to, but so I just get rid of those things since they're going to be node controlled anyway and I'm not going to fight with them too much. So that's about it. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the basic workflow of actually texturing these things and painting them and I do all those by hand and export the textures and then we put them together later on in uh, uh, Blender and use RenderMan to render it out.